Released originally in 1987 in cinemas, Robocop was a science fiction action film directed by Paul Verhoeven about Detroit police officer Alex Murphy who gets brutally murdered by a criminal gang and is resurrected by a mega corporation into a cyborg law enforcer named Robocop. The movie addressed a number of themes such as corruption, corporate greed, privatisation and the struggles of a man turned machine's identity to name a few. The movie was well known for its extreme violence and satire and brought to life, if you excuse the pun, a franchise consisting of multiple movies, a couple of animated series, a TV show and four part miniseries, a reboot in 2014 and, of course, video games with most of them based on the movies, some set outside of the movies and even one crossing over with The Terminator, another big franchise of the late 80s and early 90s. Today's game, Robocop Rogue City, is a first person shooter and is the first game in the series to be released on both PC and console since the 2003 Robocop game by Titus Interactive, which is, uh... Energy. Oh, yeah. Is a game. This review will feature late game footage out of context, but I will endeavour to keep the review spoiler free. Robocop Rogue City takes place between the events of Robocop 2 and Robocop 3 and starts off with Robocop and his partner Anne Lewis infiltrating a TV station which has been taken over by the Torchhead gang and its leader Soot wanting to offer their services to an up and coming crime boss known as the New Guy. As Robocop goes through the station taking out criminal scum and saving hostages, a platform he is walking on is blown up beneath him and he suffers damage causing him to hallucinate his past life as Alex Murphy. This unfortunately causes him to see one of the hostages in the station as his wife, and he hesitates. Thankfully, the hostage is saved by the timely intervention of Lewis, but Robocop's malfunction is caught on film, leading to discussions on his reliability. Max Becker, an employee of Omni Consumer Products, or OCP for short, behind the Robocop program, and Robocop's new overseer, explains that OCP's chairman, known as the old man, isn't happy with the bad press, and Robocop is installed with a chip to monitor and evaluate his performance as well as having psychology sessions. From here, Robocop will go on various assignments as he cleans up the streets of old Detroit of crime while helping innocent people caught up in it. Robocop also needs to capture Soot, gather information about a missing officer, and find out who the new guy is and what his plans are for the city. Does this game do the Robocop franchise justice, or is it bound for trouble? Let's see if the game is any good in the good. I really liked Rogue City's gameplay and how it really makes you feel like you're in the role of Robocop. Robocop is effectively a bullet sponge and it's fun to see you start the game shrugging off bullets with little difficulty as you power through the TV station. The developers found a good balance of making Robocop powerful while not making him too slow and sluggish which I think is something that's quite tricky to find some middle ground on. Robocop can also lift items ranging from explosive gas bottles, dumpsters, motorbikes, to even enemies, and as you shoot criminal scum and investigate things, Robocop will gain experience which will unlock skill points once he has reached a thousand points. These points can be invested into different aspects of Robocop, such as increasing his weapon damage or his resistance to damage for example. As you unlock higher levels in these aspects, you can unlock abilities such as recovering health from power boxes, having your bullets ricochet off surfaces, a dash or a shockwave that can damage or kill enemies to name a few. Maxing out the aspects will greatly benefit Robocop and it's fun maxing out his armour and watching enemies kill themselves because their bullets ricochet off his armour and hit them. The game really promotes searching every nook and cranny for evidence and things that Robocop can scan, as well as completing all the side missions so you can make the most of the experience and skill points. And I recommend investing in deduction first and getting that maxed out as it increases the amount of experience that Robocop receives. Searching every nook and cranny also helps in the main story missions as you can get additional experience for finding certain pieces of evidence or secrets in areas which can affect your evaluation. Later on in the game, Robocop can also upgrade his signature Auto 9 handgun with motherboards and chips found throughout the levels, with the latter often being found in OCP storage boxes. These motherboards for the Auto 9 changes the properties and abilities of the gun, allowing for things such as increased gore when enemies are shot, a single fire shot that deals more damage instead of the gun's usual burst fire, bullets that can go through enemies, and even an autoloader so you never have to reload again as well as other things. 
As the Auto 9 has an infinite supply of bullets, the Auto Loader will effectively make it your weapon of choice for most of the game, though Robocop can pick up weapons dropped by enemies if you want to experiment around with them. The game's story is very on point with the spirit of the first two Robocop movies, and it goes to show that the developers took a lot of care and had done a lot of research into what made the original movie a classic. The game features returning characters from the movie, such as Robocop's partner, Ann Lewis, Police Sergeant Warren Reed, most of the officers in the precinct, news host Casey Wong, Mayor Marvin Kuzak, and the old man in charge of OCP, with the game bearing the likeness of their respective actors and actresses, as some of them have since passed away. Peter Weller reprises his role as Robocop from the first two movies, and his performance I think is absolutely great. Really wish they got Nancy Allen back for Anne Lewis though, but I think the voice cast did a wonderful job acting out these characters. As well as returning characters from the movies, there are new characters created for this game that can help Robocop, such as Samantha Ortiz, a reporter wanting to expose OCP and their Delta City plans, which would force the inhabitants of Old Detroit out, Olivia Blanche, a psychiatrist who will hold sessions with Robocop, and Ulysses Washington, a rookie cop hired by OCP to initially report back to them on Robocop's actions. The game has a lot of satire and often pokes fun at things, which is evident in listening to dialogue between people, radio advertisements, and in the game's side quests. One of my favourite side quests involves Robocop rescuing a nuke dealer who is stealing and undercutting the price of the other dealers in the area. On the roof of a building, you'll find that the angry dealers are giving the one that Robocop needs to rescue an economics lesson about how his actions are ruining the market before Robocop arrives to resolve the situation. Listen guys, I'll never touch your stuff again, I swear! That's not why we're here. So what do you want? The money? I have your money. You only have half of it, and that's the problem. You're selling our product at half price. That makes my customers complain about my prices. It ain't nice, Maurice! Maybe you think that building a customer base by selling your product under its manufacturing costs is a good idea. Under what? But it's not. Such practices are spoiling the market. It's been proven time and time again that such action leads to a reduction of future demand, yours included. Antitrust laws are there for a reason. Shit, Maurice! All we want to say is that you violate the basic rules of the market with your predatory pricing. We can't just go along with that. It's unfair and unethical! Not to mention illegal. What the fuck? You are under arrest. Come quietly, or this may be the last economics discussion you will ever have. Get him! As Robocop patrols an area of Old Detroit throughout the game, he can help citizens with problems or give them a warning or tickets for misdemeanors. Some of the choices Robocop makes to key characters in the game will affect the outcome of the game and how these characters deal with their issues, as well as who will ultimately become Mayor of Detroit, with Marvin Kuzak, opposing OCP and not really being a big fan of Robocop, against John Mills, who is pro-OCP and endorsing the questionable Delta City project, while advocating that Robocop be given human rights. The story and world building has been masterfully done, and hats off to the development team for putting so much care into it. While there are some really good things about this game, it isn't without fault, so let's discuss those in... The Bad. While upgrading Robocop and making him more powerful is great, a shortcoming of the game, at the time of this review, is the lack of New Game Plus to reward players for beating the game. It'd be really neat to replay it as an almost fully upgraded Robocop so you can plough through the enemies again with even more ease, as well as see how some of the side quests might have been approached if you had invested points into a particular aspect earlier on in the game. Some options do require a certain level of skill, and it would have been nice going into a new game plus to see how this would have changed the outcome of a side quest, or check out any new dialogue. The game also lacks allowing you to manually save, so you have to rely on the game's autosave system if you need to reload from a certain point. So if you were halfway through something, you may have to reload from the start of that area. It also doesn't help that when you start a new game, it will also delete all of the autosaves from your previous playthrough. While I think having the different choices makes replayability more appealing, and that's a good thing, it would have been nice being able to manually save throughout the game or have a new game plus mode. Other than that, I can't really think of anything else, so I'll wrap things up with... The Opinion. 
Robocop has been an absolute joy to play through and the developers have done a wonderful job in making a game that stays faithful to the movies while retaining its satire and humour in its story and interactions with people in the game. The game really makes you feel like Robocop, which is a tricky balance, and there wasn't really any point in the game where I felt bored or uninterested, and the story's pacing was good so that helped. Only gripe I really had was the inability to manually save and the lack of a new game plus feature. But these are not deal breakers and instead just slight disappointments, but they are easily overshadowed by the fun I had with the game. There were some minor issues like a scene I had with Samantha Ortiz where none of her lines were voiced and her mouth wasn't moving, but as at the patch released on November 16, 2023, this has since been addressed, so I'm reasonably confident that the developers are sorting out gameplay bugs and issues. If you're a fan of 80s action movies, Robocop, first person shooters and satire, then Robocop is definitely a game to pick up. It's easily the best Robocop game I've played to date by far. Though in saying that, the bar wasn't exactly very high to begin with. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Robocop Rogue City Robocop giving the thumbs up out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.